Okay. Surprising free discussion on destiny. The future can be seen if we hear the claims of six free thinkers in ancient India. Why should we focus on ancient India now? India, which discovered zero, has been a world leader in logic and philosophy for 2,500 years. If there is a case that some misfortune is not karma, then who created that destiny? If you don't know that, you don't know whom to resent. The fact that there are three different meanings of destiny means that there are also three different ways of thinking about how destiny is determined. Let's compare them. I would like to go back 2,500 years and turn to Indian philosophy of the 5th century BC. You may feel that there is no need to know such old ideas now. However, there are significant advantages to studying the history of philosophy. Philosophers have been discussing various issues for 2,000 years and have come up with their own solutions. It is not uncommon to find theories that are in direct conflict with common sense. So the card says that any strange claims have already been made by philosophers in the past. In other words, what the human mind can come up with has already been exhausted in philosophy books. Whatever thoughts or ideas emerge in the future will be the same as or a combination of past ideas. If we study the history of philosophy, we have an idea of what theory will appear in the future. The 5th century BC was a turning point in the world history, which Jaspers named the Axial Age. Philosophers and thinkers who would become the cornerstones of humanity were born in India, China and Europe, all in step with each other. Socrates and Plato appeared in Greece, Confucius in China, and Buddha in India at remarkably similar times. All the thoughts and ideas about destiny or fate were already out at this stage. There is yet another reason to focus on India, as might be expected from a country that discovered zero, People in India can multiply two-digit numbers by rote and are famous for their unique calculation methods. But math and computers are not the only things Indians are good at. It is said that Chinese are rhetorical and Japanese are emotional, while Indians are logical. Greece and India are the only two places in the world history where logic was founded and philosophy was born. India and Europe have similarities in philosophy and ideology, and similar issues have been discussed in those countries. So if you study the history of Indian thought, you can get some ideas of what logical minds can come up with. Now is the time to know the new from the old. In those days, India was exceptionally free and no one was punished for expressing any opinion in the philosophers' debates held by kings. Max Weber noted that nowhere else in human history was freedom of thought as tolerated as in India during this period, except in Europe in the most recent times. Many thinkers appeared who rejected Brahmanism which was the tradition of the time, and there were indeed a hundred contending schools of thought from moral denialist to materialist, hedonist, skeptics, and agnostics. Most of those free thinkers did not leave behind organized works, so their arguments can only be found primarily in Buddhist scriptures. A Buddhist scripture is a written record of the words of Gautama Buddha Shakyamuni. It was translated into Pali, Sanskrit, Tibetan, and other languages in various regions. The Chinese translation of the Buddhist scriptures, which China completed with all its efforts, was introduced to Japan. 
In the Buddhist scriptures, six influential leaders are named and referred to as the six masters. Let's spotlight each of these ideas and hear the results of free discussion at the time. Free discussion on fate, one. Fatalism, Macaulay fate is determined before we are born and cannot be changed no matter what we do. First, Macaulay, one of the six masters, advocated fatalism, the belief that our destiny is predetermined from birth to death and cannot be changed no matter how hard we try. According to Macaulay, all living things have been repeating reincarnation for hundreds of millions of trillions of years, but there is no cause or reason for it. All living beings eventually become pure beings and leave a cycle of reincarnation or liberation. But even for that, there is no cause. He taught that all living beings are simply swept away by the destiny that comes, sometimes suffering, sometimes enjoying, and that a cycle of reincarnation ends after an endless period of 8,400,000 kalpas. Just as when you throw a spool of thread and it keeps rolling until all the thread is unraveled, both the foolish and the wise will continue to drift and roll for a predetermined period of time. Any practice or training does not change the duration. Thus, Macaulay argued, human effort has no meaning. It is resignationism, the belief that one's destiny is determined before one is born and that one has no choice but to continue to accept it. Okay, so that was the first one. Sounds kind of grim, but I think when people see um, regions or, or just some humans who are born into extremely painful situations, and they end their life like that too. Um, so one cannot help but think this destiny must have been predetermined and there, there was nothing they could do to change it. Or maybe there were things they could do, but in reality, they were not able to free themselves from agony and misery and suffering. So I think on the surface, it looks like, yeah, um, I mean, I, I can see why some people wanted to believe in this way. Actually, even today, people ask me the same question when I explain about karma and, uh, and that you can change your future. Buddha taught people, some people want to challenge us by bringing these examples of uh, people who are born into horrible circumstances. So yeah, we can see where this argument comes from, but obviously it's not um, it's not a way of thinking that motivates us to make effort or create that freedom in our mind, even if we are in a jail or in a very oppressive society. Uh, our mind is free, but we need to learn how to have that freedom. So I think all the more we can. Uh, rejoice over our blessing, not to have uh, fallen into this way of thinking of resignationism or determinism, and constantly ask questions and examine our lives. And, and that's how we have found the Dharma. So good job, everyone. We're going to have the new beats class in 30 minutes, and then we will listen to the last quarter of the webinar at 1030 a.m. and have a wonderful Sunday. Bye. Thank you, Thank you, Pierre. Thank you, Gary, and everybody. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, Anu. Bye.